Hello. Could you tell me about your background and you found, how you found moving into the UK and Birmingham? Sure. Well, my background is pretty straightforward. I was born in the uh, Caribbean, in Jamaica. Yeah. And um, my father died quite unexpectedly. Okay. I was about 15 and a half, 16 then. Oh. My mother, when she sorted all the affairs out, yeah. she was still indeed exhausted and stressed. Yeah. So she came to England for a holiday, stayed with her brother who was living in, yeah. in Hansworth then. Yeah. Um, and uh, about three months after she arrived, yeah. uh, she suggested that I should join her. Yeah. So all the arrangements were made that I came. Yeah. And um, I was very clear in my mind that um, I only wanted to um, be here for about two, three months and then to go back to Jamaica to my friends where it was warm yeah. and um, an environment which I knew and I yeah. felt quite safe and comfortable. Um, but uh, she had a, a, other idea, she wanted me to stay. Anyway, we reached a compromise after a lot of um, you know, hard searching on both sides. And it was decided that I stayed. I was going to stay for five years. Yeah. I was going to get myself some decent education, yeah. and I was going to be, go back to Jamaica, be prime minister, and run the country. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and um, I'm still here. I wasn't yeah. prime minister, <laughs> and uh, I have run the country. But you know, um, I still have a lot of um, involvement in Jamaica. Yeah. I'm the chancellor of the University of Technology yeah. in Kingston, and um, I have interest uh, working with Jamaica National, which is a large building society. So yeah. I've got stacks of friends, so I go to Jamaica at least once a year. But Birmingham is my home. <laughs> <laughs> I, I worked um, in a, an engineering company yeah. down in Witten. Um, it's no longer there, a Hardy Spices, but they've actually moved to Chester Road in Erdington and they still got facilities there, yeah. although the ownership has changed over the years. Yeah. So I worked there for, altogether I worked there for 18 years. And while I was there, every, all my friends and colleagues were joining the trade union, so I joined as well. Yeah. Um, with no sort of thought of the trade union becoming a career. Yeah. Um, but, you know, I'm one of those people who believe if my interest is being debated or discussed, yeah. then I should have some influence over how my interest <laughs> emerges. So I um, joined the union, became active in the union, yeah. and um, uh, held office at different levels. And then when I had an opportunity to become an employee of the union, getting onto the payroll, so to yeah. speak, I took that opportunity, I was fortunate. And subsequently, I held office at different levels yeah. until I was elected as the General Secretary of the Union, a job that I held for 12 years. So I was elected yeah. and re-elected, yeah. uh, and uh, I retired about four years of long so. uh -huh. Oh yes, I think so. I mean, it was valuable to me, yeah. um, because trade unions isn't just about um, having disputes, trade union. Yeah. First of all, trade union um, provides career opportunities. Yeah. Um, my union employed over a thousand people when I was general secretary. Yeah. Um, they provide uh, employment opportunities, they provide um, educational opportunities. Yeah. Um, you know, we fund bursaries to places like Oxford. Uh, we spend significant amount of money um, edu in, on edu in education, um, people have an opportunity to travel. So no, trade unions are, are, are an invaluable um, contribution towards uh, social development and building social capital. And I, I would encourage um, every young person who is in, in, in employment yeah. um, to be a member of a trade union because you don't have to be an activist. Yeah. But I see, see my trade union membership when I took it out first, not as um, an activity or a decision that was going to give me quick returns, but as an insurance policy. <laughs> I'm supporting Birmingham in the home because for me that's literally true. It's a statement of fact. Um, I, when I came to Birmingham in 1954, yeah. uh, I lived in Birmingham. 
My children were born here, they were educated here. Yeah. I still have an interest. We are in the town hall. Um, I'm a trustee, I'm on the trustee board which runs the town hall and the symphony hall. Yeah. My family, when I leave here this evening, I will go to Hansworth to see my, my auntie. And uh, I have my hair put in the barber shop <laughs> on Soho Road. So, you know, need I go on? <laughs> Well, I don't say it can be a positive. It is a positive force. Yeah. Um, we've enriched the culture. Um, we've made an economic contribution. Uh, we've made a social contribution. Uh, we made a spiritual contribution. I was yeah. talking today uh, to um, someone who is very much involved in the Pentecostal church. Yeah. And um, it's not just a church where you go to on a Sunday morning and worship. They have business opportunities where they train young people um, in, uh, in commerce and um, giving them all sorts of skills. So it's, it's, it's a truism in the overall context as, as to what uh, can in fact be achieved. Yeah. Well it will, but the campaign by itself, you know, it's not a question of just taking the posters and the images and stick them in a library. Yeah. It's about um, making sure that people understand. So you need a narrative to go with the campaign and it's got to carry commitment. And if I had have one real wish for this campaign is to try and get it in, into our schools. Yeah. Yeah, because if it can become um, a part of the curriculum, if you're looking at social policy, social development or history for example, it could be easily incorporated in history lessons or geography lessons because you can look at the countries from which people come, you can look at the, you know, the sort of um, culture, the vegetation from which, so you could be doing India, Australia, the Caribbean, the Middle East or whatever it is, it, it's got tremendous potential but it needs resource resource is the thing and I hope that you know somewhere whether it's through the agencies or the city council or whatever um, some resource can be found to get this campaign into the schools. I'm a great believer in seeing education as um, a, a, a message carrier. Yeah. Through education you can you can say much and do much so um, that's my wish anyway. The project's going to feature, it's got a message yeah. um, and um, you know the partnership has a mission to explain that message. The only problem is one of resource. Yeah. There, there are, you know, in times of economic difficulty, the resource implication will be a challenge. But the message is so strong and so powerful and so important and so timely that somehow um, you know, whatever that can be done, should be done to yeah. get this message through because I really, really, really would love to see this project in our school. Yeah, be really, really yeah, good yeah, yeah. I mean, it's great here, but we're talking to the converted. We're all converts this yeah. afternoon <laughs> and sticking it in a library. People go in, they're going in for their books or to do something, you know. Yeah. Um, and you're competing with a lot of other posters in the library, a lot of other causes. Yeah. But if you could find some way of targeting this, this project into yeah. the schools where, as I've said, I'm repeating myself now, it would fit neatly into the curriculum, whether you're debating social culture, whether you're debating geography, whatever you're debating, yeah. this has a place because you can show how people live, you can show um, you know, the, the culture, the customs and everything like that. So that's the avenue that I think that this project would make a real difference, you know. But yeah. we'll see, um, even if they don't manage to get into the school, there is a message there and that message, you know, a good message will always get exposure.